this is into the fire. I'd like to welcome into the fire the emerging talent, the cheeky halfback flanker, cool guy, and the guy who I predict is about to have a breakout year, Connor Iron. Nice to meet you, Connor. Thank you. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate oh, it. It's my, it's my absolute pleasure. You were born in England. You have an Australian mother and an African father. Wow, you have a cool heritage. What brought you to Australia and how young did you come back? So I was born in England. Um, mum, and, mum and dad had me over there. Um, they split up, unfortunately, which happens to um, a lot of families. But um, I moved back here with mum when I was, uh, I think I was three years old. So I was pretty young. I don't remember England too much, but moved with mum to, to Sydney, where I am now. Um, and then we moved to Melbourne and then to Geelong, which I played obviously most of my tack cup footy and um, yeah, the rest is history. So I was pretty young and I don't, don't remember much from England, but um, yeah, it's good to have that little bit of culture in me and um, different heritage to a lot of people. Yeah, that's really interesting. What was the young Connor Iden like and what were you like at school? I bet you were the cheeky kid, weren't you? Oh, I've always had that little bit of cheek about me, but um. No, I was pretty quiet at school early on. Um, and then I guess when I get comfortable around people and um, I guess I find my group of friends, I get a bit cheeky and a bit comfortable, but um, it can get me in a little bit of strife sometimes. Um, but no, it's good fun. I like to have fun and um, just keep everyone on their toes. And um, yeah, I talk a bit of rubbish, which um, sometimes people don't believe me, but um, yeah, it's good. Good fun. Sounds good. Now going into the 2018 draft, you even said to yourself, you didn't know if you were even going to be taken. You end up going at pick 61. What was that feeling like to be given your place in the AFL for Giants? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, as I said, I didn't, I had a hope of getting drafted, but um, nothing was ever really certain. So um, coming into that day, I was um, crapping my pants, to be honest. Um, I didn't have, yeah, any certainty. Um, I just, uh, I didn't let any family or friends come around. Um, I said, just mum, mummy, stepdad and, and my little brother can watch. Um, so we're watching all day and then um, there was only a couple of clubs that I thought I had a chance um, and then I sort of slid, slid down a fair bit and I thought I was nearly done. I was nearly ready to walk out of the living room and go sit in my room and have a little sob but um, thankfully the Giants traded, traded to get another pick in the 60s and um, when I heard my name it was a big relief. I think I shed a few tears I'll admit. Um, um, family screamed a bit and then yeah the rest is history. I was so happy to come to the Giants and um, we'll never look back. Yeah, well, did you expect that the Giants might have picked you up before drop? Yeah, they were probably one of two or three clubs that I thought I had a real chance with. And um, they lost all their picks um, bidding on Kieran Briggs. So they lost their picks there. But luckily, it was the first year where clubs could actually trade future picks for a pick in the, in the new draft. So, um, yeah, I was very lucky and it all, all worked out to plan. Yeah. What a bloke you are. I see you even sent a little cheeky text to Sam Reid welcoming him to the club. Yeah, nah. Um, me and me and Reedy get along pretty well. He's an he's an older man. Um, I'm pretty young and cheeky, as he said. So I thought I'd just um, throw a bit of banter his way and um, try and take the high, high ground and say he just got re rookied. So um, yeah, if we do a bit of boxing throughout the year, he'll probably give me a couple of little uppercuts to the head and pull me back in the line. But yeah, for now it's all fun and games. Yeah, for those people who said that this was being disrespectful and not respecting your elders. I say, please grow up and get a joke. Is it hard yeah. to with social media and some of the people that troll it? Um, it's okay. Um, being in Sydney, it's not as bad as um, obviously what it would be in Melbourne and other football states. But yeah, I did see that little title saying I disrespected him. Um, there was obviously no malicious intent to disrespect him. We're good mates. And um, he obviously understood the banter and so did everyone else at the club. But in terms of media, if they're, if they're having a little digs at you, we... All players try not to really look into that too much. And it's all about your family, what the family think, what your teammates think and what the club thinks. So anything else um, outside of that doesn't really matter to us. Yeah. Now, you played your junior footy with the Geelong Falcons. Let's see how good my research is. You played with Sam Walsh and Cooper Stevens and Bailey Scott. All great players. What were these guys like as upcoming stars? No, they're all, all very good blokes. Um, Obviously, you could tell while she was a star um, all the time, and I lo looked up to while she playing with him. He taught me a lot of little um, habits, and um, yeah, there's a lot, lot of people drafted out of the Falcons in my couple of years there. So 
my bottom age year, we had sort of Tom McCart and Matt, Matt Lee and um, a few other boys that got drafted. So, um, yeah, it was good to look up to them and learn their trades, how to be sort of a bit more professional. And I was obviously a pretty raw prospect. So um, learning a bit of professionalism from Walsh and that sort of thing really helped me, help my development. Yeah, it would have been cool. Now, you played for Victoria Country in a carnival. You got beaten by SA, but you had some serious talent. I mean, you had Caleb Sarong and Xavier Dersma. What was it like playing against such talent at that age? Yeah, well, you don't really realise how good they're going to be um, when they hit the league. And obviously, we're all just trying to get drafted at that point. So, seeing what they're doing now in the league is um, pretty awesome. And obviously, Caleb Sarong in his first year dominating. Mm. Xavier Dersma making waves with his little um, bow and arrow sort of stuff. So, oh. yeah, it's sick um, seeing what they're doing. And hopefully, I can get up to their level. Um, in the near future and um, play against them on the big stage. Yeah, they've done really well for themselves. So you're an incredibly fast defender that shows dash and agility off the back line. What is in store for fans this year from you? Yeah, well, I've been working pretty hard over the off-season and um, started pre-season. So uh, my main weakness was my endurance, which I've um, yeah improved on that. So hopefully um, if I get a few games, I'll be able to um, have those little flashes of... Um, Brilliance a bit more often and um, hopefully if I'm taking running bounces, I'm not puffed for the whole next quarter. So um, those repeat efforts should be a bit better and um, yeah, hopefully I get to show that on the big stage. Yeah. Now, being that you are 190 centimetres, you can play on tools and smalls and can run like the wind. What is your preferred position? Yeah, so yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah, there's tools and smalls that you have to plan, but um, yeah, I usually get put onto those medium tools. Um, but yeah, I don't mind playing on the smalls. I think I've somewhat got a bit of pace to hold off the back of them. And then the bigger boys, I like to think I've got enough strength to sort of hang off them as well. So um, I think being versatile is a really big strength of mine and um, will hopefully help me get games in the future. Hopefully Lauren Cameron sees that and helps me out a bit and puts me on smalls and tools and medium. So um, yeah, I don't really have a preferred, but yeah, I just play my role and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's ask some. Let me ask some rumors. The boys have told me about you. I think they have been a bit harsh. All right, here we go. <laughs> now I hear you think you're a bit of a gamer. Some of the boys are saying you overrate yourself. What do you say to that? And who really is the worst gamer? Well, I think I think I am a very good gamer. I think the boys that have told you I'm not too good are a bit jealous, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm not too bad at my NBA 2K and COD. Um, NBA 2K is my best game. I don't think anyone's better than me at that. So um, I'll stick by my word with that. Cod, I'm, I'm slightly above average. But um, yeah, whoever said that's pretty jealous. And I'm happy to 1v1 them in any game. So just let me know who that was after the show. Right, I'll let you know. The boys told me you were single because you couldn't bear sharing the cupboard space or the bathroom. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure where you're getting that dirt from. I am single, but... Yeah, I don't, yeah, I like my cupboard space, but sharing a bathroom, um, I can share a bathroom, but yeah, I, I think I'll stick single for a bit longer, yeah. Yeah. Is it true that there isn't another guy in the club that spends more time on their hair? Oh, I'm not even going to try to deny it. I do spend a lot of time on the hair and um, look in the mirror a fair bit, trying to keep it, keep it looking all right. So yeah, I, I can't, can't argue with that. Yeah, you can't deny that one. No, right. Not at all. They say heat's your quit because you have become more of a pest than him. Is that true? Oh, as I said, I am cheeky. I'm a bit of a pest, but Shory was a whole different beast. He's he's the number one pest. Him and Shane Munford, biggest pest in the league. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to have to take Shory's role and throw a bit more cheek around, I reckon. Yeah. The question really intrigues me. Apparently, you were taught to shoot basketballs by Markel Fultz. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true I've got I'll mark, mark my word here I've got the best jump shot at the Giants so there's a few blokes that get a bit jealous with that but yeah I've got a pretty nice stroke I like to think I'm a bit like Kevin Durant or Steph Curry oh yeah sure how <laughs> true is it that you can't play one on one with Jackson Haley for the fear of him breaking your ankles oh now I know where you're getting the dirt from you're getting the dirt from <laughs> Haley <laughs> one of the biggest rubbish talkers I know he's probably worse than me but, um, yeah, one-on-one, on one, I've, I've blocked Haley, I reckon, 50 times when he's trying to go to the ring. So, yeah, he can dribble, but he can't hit a shot and can't score on me. So Yeah, it's a good way to think about it. 
Yeah. All right, let's ask a few things just about you. What do you like to do outside of footy? Yeah, so I'm pretty crazy. So obviously I like to um, play, play the PlayStation, which um, you've heard a fair bit of. Um, I like my clothes and shoes, so I do a lot of looking at that and go to shops all the time and um, looking on websites, trying not to spend all my money. But um, sometimes, yeah, it's a bit around. But, yeah, apart from that, we live just down the road from the beach, so I like to have a swim and, and chill with the boys. But, um, yeah, American sport like NBA, I like to watch a lot as well. So um, I've got a fair few things I do outside of footy, but, um, yeah, it's all good fun. Sounds good. Who at the club do you hang around with the most? And who's your footy bestie? Yeah, so um, I live with Xavier O'Halloran and Jack Buckley at the moment. So I spend a lot of time with them at the club. Um, Tim Taranto, Isaac Cumming, spend a lot of time around. Harry Himmelberg, Matt Flynn. Um, Tanner Bruins just got drafted, so I've been spending a lot of time with him. Um, but yeah, the Giants, we've got a really strong culture where everyone's really good mates and um, it's really close. Everyone's really close. So um, in terms of footy buddy, I look up to Nick Haynes a lot, obviously. He's a freak defender, so I like to watch what he does and like ask him a lot of questions. So he's probably my footy bestie and um, follow him around a fair bit, yeah. Yeah, not a bad person to role model. Not at all. Yeah. Who at the club would most likely win a trivia night? Maybe Lockie Ash? <sighs> Lockie Ash and <laughs> trivia aren't good friends at all. Um, <laughs> Matt DeBoer's very smart. Lockie Keefe's very smart. Um... I'd probably back in those two. If, if I was going to go on a trivia team, I'd try and tag along with them. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be much help, but I'd just, yeah, try and make a few laughs and let them carry me all the way to victory. It doesn't sound like a bad idea. Are you still, yeah. Are you still going to send Jeremy Cameron a Christmas card? Oh, yeah. Me, me and Jez are pretty close. We played a lot of Call of Duty together. So um, I've got no hard feelings between Jez. It hurts a bit seeing him in Geelong Colours because I miss him a lot, but. Um, I wish him all the best and, yeah, we'll be playing Call of Duty for sure in the near future. <laughs> yeah, of course. There's a guy at the bar and he's surrounded by girls. Who is it? You can say yourself if you want. Yeah, it's definitely me. <laughs> 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 nah, it's, um, there's, uh, I'll, I'll give you a bit of, bit of dirt at the club. Xavier O'Halloran thinks he's pretty good at that sort of stuff. Jack Buckley, uh, yeah, he's, he's scared of girls, so he's not too good. Um, I like, I like to think I, I would be the guy at the bar, but um, that's obviously me just being a bit cheeky. Um, Tim Taranto rates himself as well, so that's a little bit of dirt for her. That's some good dirt. And what is your table tennis game like? Because the boys tell me the table ain't big enough for you to hit it. Oh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm probably the second best at the club. Carl Ward's the best table tennis player at the club, I'll admit that. I've versed him probably 200 times and I've probably won only 10 games, so he's a freak. Um, Adam Kennedy goes all right on the table tennis table, but um, Sam Taylor as well, when he was in his prime, he's not too bad at table tennis. But yeah, there's some good competitions. I ran a, I ran a tournament in the hub last year. I called it the Hammer Cup. Um, and I, I didn't play in it, but I was a commissioner. So I had the suit on. Got the good trophy. Carl Ward took that out against Adam Kennedy in the final. So that was all good fun. Yeah, it would be. Well, Connor, you're a champion and I cannot wait to watch you. This year because I'm predicting 2021 is your breakout year. The year when you repeatedly run off that halfback line and set the field at life. But what I'm really waiting for is that first career goal. You'll get your chance to beat those lame celebrations that Stephen Cornelio steals off soccer players. You can have mine. The real deal of celebrations, the only celebration befitting of the genius you are. It's the end of the fly. He's on here. Oh, that goes nicely. I'll be sure to remember that. Hopefully, um, the, the first goal comes pretty soon. So, I'll be throwing that one into the flame out. All right, bang. Nice. Right. <laughs> well, Connor, you're a super player and a super guy. You will fast this year, become one of this the league's most popular players because of the star qualities you possess both on and off the field. Thanks heaps for going into the fire with me today, mate. No worries. Thanks for having me. I'll, um, hopefully I can get back on in the near future. Appreciate Thanks, it. You're a legend.